This is Milkweed, the host plant for monarch butterflies. For Monarch Research Project in Marion, it's gold. The existence of this plant means female monarchs can lay eggs. Then larvae, or caterpillars if you prefer, eat enough milkweed to transform into a butterfly and hopefully successfully migrate to Mexico. But that's become increasingly difficult. You know, over the last few decades, there's been a fairly steady average decline in the population. Um, and then, of course, this year, we had a 59% decline this past winter. So the Monarch Research Project has intervened by restoring natural habitat and rearing monarch butterflies. And they're helping Iowans do the same in their backyards. Station manager Augie Bergstrom took the Gazette behind the scenes of their lab, where somewhere in the ballpark of 800 monarchs are being raised. So we start rearing every year in May here in the lab. We use wildly sourced monarchs. We will do a very small number in here through the summer, um, but this is really when we're, we're busiest. It takes a lot of manual labor to um, individually, you know, feed each of these caterpillars. When they're outside on plants that are in the ground, you just let them do their thing. But we're constantly bringing in new milkweed probably two or three times a day to, to feed all these guys. So there's, we haven't done an official count, but there's about 800 or so in here and they've all crystallized almost. We've got a few caterpillars left, but if you look at the top of the enclosures, there's tons and tons of chrysalis. So this is when it's easy. They're all in their chrysalis for the most part, so we're not having to feed. We just wait for 10 days and they'll start coming out. But anyway, we use those butterflies once they're adults. We test them for parasites, make sure there's nothing that will be spreading in that population. And then we bring them outside and we release several of them, you know, a good portion of them, but we also keep some to, to breed and continue laying eggs. And so that's how we get through our, our four generations here in the spring um, and summer and eventually into September is that fourth generation that will release, but also tag, and hopefully they get, they get down to Mexico. We use these tents out here when we're outside of the lab and we're rearing outside in June, July, August. We use what we call a bio tent, which is a mesh um, tent that, you know, is as natural as you can get while still being protected by the, the predators, the parasites, the parasitoids that would get them naturally. So These tents are also used by backyard rearers who are supplied with milkweed plugs and caterpillars from the project. For those with space on their porches and balconies, We've got a, a small life cycle kit that, you know, we'll give you three or four caterpillars. We'll give you a pot of milkweed and you put that on your porch. And it's more of, a, that one's more of an educational tool. You get to see the life cycle um, and then release them when they're done. This lack of native habitat is not going to be solved from a, a higher level. It's gonna be community driven. We have a ton of green space where we live we can utilize it. It may not feel like much, but if we can get an incredible number of people to transition a portion of their yard into micro prairie or create a pollinator flower bed, um, or even just put in a couple milkweeds, we can start to fill in the gaps of that habitat fragmentation and make it a lot easier on not only monarchs, but, but other insects that are looking for a, a place to do their life cycle.